tonight we've joined the mortar unit. Oh, screw! The sun is setting and we're getting ready. Tonight our team has a chance to join one of the most renowned units in the Ukrainian army in one of the most dangerous areas of the front line, Azov. The legendary Azov Brigade is finally back at the front line and uh, tonight we've joined the mortar unit that is fighting in the woods of uh, the Hesk region uh -huh. under the moonlight just like under the bright sun. Ostril! The world knows Azov as one of the most important units of the Russia-Ukrainian war. They liberated Mariupol in 2014 and defended the city till the bitter end in 2022. I am told firsthand what it takes to become an Azov fighter. You have to be motivated to defend your homeland. That's the most important thing. And you gotta have balls. Deep at night, in this forest, it is as dark as at the bottom of the sea. But make no mistake, the enemy is very close. About kilometer. After 30 seconds of flight, the mortar reaches Russian positions. During the night, the enemy never sleeps. They rotate, resupply and even attempt to advance. It is crucial to keep the Russians under constant pressure. We won't let them pass. This forest is their grave, where they will all burn to ashes sooner or later. We'll do everything, we'll try everything we can think of to make it as uncomfortable as possible for them. As the sun rises, you can see the beauty of this area. Save the forest reads the sign nearby, but I guess it's too late. With daybreak, there comes an understanding of how difficult it is to fight here. The area is known as Serebrinsky Forest and it is right on the border of Donetsk and Luhansk regions. While Ukrainian forces have had success in the south, it was here that the Russian army gained most of the territories last year. Now the situation is as tense as ever, and it is Azov's job to stabilize it. All my friends who I asked about the forests of Crimea were like, my gosh. I wondered why, and when we arrived, I understood. It's very hard. First of all, it's hard to establish communication between units. Then the wooded terrain. Plus, the enemy has concentrated colossal artillery forces here. At just 29 years old, Lemko is a major commander of the 1st Special Purpose Battalion, an Azov veteran who endured the battle for Mariupol. He is one of the many officers who experienced captivity, but upon their release wasted no time in retrieving their weapons and starting to rebuild the brigade. As he puts it, the veterans form the backbone of Azov, while the recruits provide the muscle. Is this a baptism of fire for you? Yes, this is my first deployment. So you were an Azov recruit not long ago? Yes. And how do you like it here? It's great. I found brothers in arms here. We are one big family. During the course of the day, explosions become more frequent. Leaving the trench can be deadly. Currently, there are 10 to 20,000 enemy soldiers in this forest, and many of them are aware that Azov is holding the defense here. 
The regiment has been the subject of Russian propaganda for many years, so they receive special treatment from the enemy. A mix of fear and hatred. The fact that we are a sweet target for them is 100% true. For legend and humble to snipers, the Serebrinsky forest is one of the most difficult terrains they have encountered. The distance to the enemy sometimes gets as close as 70 meters, and enemy drones are constantly in the air, ready to spot any movement. The enemy can attack at any time. If we are prepared, we can crush their offensive in only a few minutes. If people start falling around you, three, four, five, six, seven, and you see that your unit is crushed, you won't have much desire to go forward. Both Legend and Humble defended the Azovstal steel plant in a symbolic battle that showcased the true pride of Ukrainian resistance. As a result, Humble was captured while Legend was evacuated with severe wounds via helicopter. Since then, approximately 700 Azov fighters have been in captivity for over 500 days. As a result, every captured Russian soldier provides hope for bringing one of their brothers back home. The only thing we can do to help our imprisoned comrades is to go and replenish the exchange fund and somehow try to bring our boys back.